फ्रेंड्स सो आफ्टर कंप्लीटिंग द क्वेश्चन नंबर वन लेट्स मूव टू द क्वेश्चन नंबर टू वेर विल सी हाउ टू सॉल्व द प्रॉब्लम ऑन हाइर ऑर्डर डिफरेंशियल इक्वेशन वेन राइट एंड साइड इज साइन ए एक्स और कॉस ए एक्स सो यू वी हैव टू सॉल्व कोसेक एक्स डी रेस टू फोर वाई By dx raised to four plus y cos x is equal to sine two. So guys, we have to solve this equation. But observe this equation. You will find that this is not the higher order differential equation with constant coefficient. Because here, if you observe the coefficient of this differential term, that contains variable x. So you can't say it's a constant. So first thing is we can't solve this problem until and unless we convert it into a standard form of higher order differential equation. And guys. In the first video of this chapter, I've shown you what is the standard form of higher order differential equation. So in the in that, what we do is we bring the coefficient of this higher the uh, higher order term as one. So to make it one, we have to divide throughout with cosec x. So here I'll say dividing throughout by cosec x. So by dividing here. This term will be cancelled. We'll get now here also cosec x term is cancelled. Now here we'll get sine two x upon cosec x, and I'll take that cosec x in the numerator. So that will become sine of two x into sine of x. Now guys, why I'm making it sine? Because it's clear that. If I want to solve this question, then right hand side has to be sine or cos. Because so then only we can apply the rule belongs uh, which says your RHS is right. Uh, your RHS is sine x or cos x. So that is why I I uh, brought that cos x from denominator to the numerator and made it as sine x. Now next step. So we got the higher order differential equation in standard form. Now What we have to do is we have to first find out the complementary function, and for that reason, we'll require the auxiliary equation. So, guys, auxiliary equation we'll get from here. So, this is nothing but d raised to four y plus y. So, I can take y common, and here we will get d raised to four plus one. This term as it is. But now, guys, again observe one more thing that if I want to apply the rule on this term, then these are there are two sign terms which are multiplying each other, and I can't apply the operator on one sign term and then multiply it by operator on second sign term. So for that reason, we should have plus sign or minus sign between any two trigonometric function. And guys, that is why I'm going to use here the defactorization formula of trigonometry. So here I'll use the formula of sine a into sine b, which says answer is one by two cos of x minus cos of three x. So here I'm using the formula of Cos of a minus b minus cos a plus b. So guys, uh, you have to be very well with the trigonometry because if you want to get the solution, your formula, um, you you should remember the formula because we have to apply the formula to get the answer. Now next step, here I'll get the auxiliary equation. So for that, we equate that function of d to zero. Now let's find out the four roots because here the degree is four. So we have to find out the four roots of this equation. Now, guys, how to find the four roots? So one suggestion the student always gives is, sir, take that one on the other side. So that will become d to the power four equal to minus one, and then we'll take a square root and again square root. But guys, you can't do that because if you take first square root, then you will get d square equal to plus or minus root of minus one, and that root of minus one is i. So you will get d square equal to plus or minus i. Now, guys. For you get you are getting the imaginary number, so d square is the imaginary number. Again, if you take the root, then you can't take root of the imaginary term. So that method is not applicable over here. So how to get the four roots? So for that, what we will do is we will add the middle term. So guys, if you observe this equation carefully, and if you compare this equation with one formula of algebra that is a plus b the whole square which is a square plus 2ab plus b square then what we do we can do is we can treat this first term as a square last term as b square and the middle term that is plus 2ab we can find out and we can add it once we can subtract it once so here we'll get therefore d to the power 
now the middle term is so plus do 2d square here i've written at the same time i will subtract 2d square equal to 0 now by doing this here we got three terms which are complete square so here we'll get d square plus 1 the whole square and this three terms is an expansion of this two terms so minus root 2 into d the whole square now guys why i'm converting this in square form the reason is by doing that we can get a form like a square minus b square and then we can again apply the formula of a minus b into a plus b and then we can get two quadratic equation and from there we can get four roots so here we'll get d square plus square root of 2d plus 1 into d square minus square root of 2 into d plus 1 equal to 0. Now here let's solve the quadratic equation. So for first quadratic equation, we'll find out the root by using the formula. So therefore here I'll say d equal to negative b. So b is root 2. So that will become negative root 2 plus minus square root of b square. So square of this root 2 is 2 minus 4ac. So 4 into a is 1, c is 1. So you will get 4 upon 2a is 2. Now here negative root 2 as it is plus or minus. This is minus 2 and the root of minus 2 is root 2i by 2. Now guys here this 2 we can treat as root 2 into root 2 and we can cancel 1 root 2. So we will get final answer as minus 1 upon root 2 plus minus i upon root 2. So these are the two roots from the first quadratic equation. Now let's find out two more roots from the second quadratic equation but this this equation also similar to first equation. The only difference is the sign of b and that is why in this answer I'll use this formula or, or this solution as it is and we'll directly say that other two roots are 1 upon root 2 plus or minus i by root 2 and guys here we get four complex and distinct roots now let's find out the solution or the complementary function whenever we have complex and distinct roots so it is given by cf or we can also call it as yc so this is the notation that we use so that is given by the formula e to the power real part so real part here is negative 1 by root 2 into x so that will become negative x upon root 2 in bracket c1 cos of imaginary part so that is x by root 2 plus c2 sin of imaginary part that is x by root 2 so this is a solution for first two roots now for next two roots we'll say plus e to the power real part is 1 by root 2 so that becomes x upon root 2 in bracket c, c3 cos of imaginary part so that becomes x by root 2 plus c4 sin of imaginary part so that is sin of x upon root 2 so guys here we got the complementary function now let's find out the particular integral and for that we have a formula so particular integral is generally denoted by yp it is given by 1 upon the function of d now here function of d is d to the power 4 plus 1 into right hand side and this is the right hand side so we'll write it now 1 upon 2 is constant i'll take it outside and we will apply this operator 1 upon d raised to 4 plus 1 on cos x and then on cos of 3x. So that will become now guys 
let's apply the rule of sine and cos so whenever we have sine and cos term we substitute d square as negative a square so here in the first case the value of a is 1 so negative a square will become negative 1 it means i have to substitute d square as negative 1 so we will rewrite this term as 1 upon d square the whole square plus 1 into cos of x and then we will put this d square as minus 1 similarly here this will become 1 upon d square the whole square plus 1 into cos of 3x so in the second case we can put d square as negative 9 so by doing that we will get so this d square is negative 1 so negative 1 square is 1 1 plus 1 2 so 1 by 2 cos of x minus d square minus 9 minus 9 square is positive 81 plus 182 so 1 upon 82 cos of 3x so now if you want you can take 1 upon 2 common so 1 by 4 outside in bracket we will get cos of x minus 1 upon 41 cos of 3x so guys this is the value of particular integral so we got particular integral we got complementary function and now the last step is the final solution which is given by the yc plus yp or you will say complementary function plus particular integral so guys you just have to copy down those two values over here and by doing that we can get the final answer so i'm sure that you understood this video and guys if you want to learn more about engineering mathematics you have to subscribe to ekira.com because then only you can get the notification about the new videos that we are uploading every day also don't forget to press the bell icon because then only you will get the notification also share this video with your friend because they can also get good marks by studying through ekira thank you very much